I'm going to read There's Nothing to Do on Mars by Chris Gall. There's nothing to do on Mars. When Davy Martin's family moved to Mars, he thought he'd never make a friend again. You'll be fine, his father said. You've got your dog, his mother said. There's lots to do on Mars, they insisted. But Davy knew there was nothing to do on Mars. The nights were very cold, the dust storms were terrible, and there was no water anywhere. I'm bored, Davy shouted one day. Go out and play, his father shouted back. Davy hopped on his scooter, his dog Polaris chased after him. Okay, you know the rules, Davy, reminded Polaris. Don't bark at the moons. Don't bark at the moons and be careful what you sniff. You might overload your circuits. Polaris couldn't fetch and sometimes his batteries leaked all over the floor, but he did have a remarkable nose. Once he even smelled some old socks Davy left behind on Earth. Polaris beeped and clicked, and together they raced across Mars. They zoomed over dry riverbeds, zipped through deep canyons, and zigzagged around giant craters. They even spotted some ancient volcanoes. I'm bored, Davy said. Let's climb a tree. The tree they found had been thirsty for many years and had become quite cranky. And when the tree began to moan and groan and shake its brittle branches, Davy quickly jumped down. I'm bored, he said. Let's build a fort. Thanks to the light Martian gravity, Davy found the rocks easy to lift. It's not a bad fort, I guess. But why do all the rocks on Mars have to be red, Davy grumbled. From high up on the steps, Polaris noticed a horrible stench. That means a bad smell. Stench coming from the valley. He whirled and clattered with excitement. Martians, Davy shouted. The Martians had not been able to take a bath in a very long time, and they smelled worse than skunks. Davy and Polaris joined them in a big rain dance anyway, hopping and howling like real Martians. Soon the stink of Martians became too much. When Polaris began to wobble and stagger, Davy thought it might be time to sneak away. I'm bored, Davy whispered. Let's dig for buried treasure. Polaris sniffed out a good spot and started to dig. All he found was an old bone. All Davy found was an old toy. Do you recognize the toy? <laughs> Suddenly, Polaris sat up and put his nose into the thin Martian air. He buzzed and bleeped and bolted for the horizon. Find the treasure, Davy called and sped after Polaris, who was bounding toward the most extraordinary mountain on Mars. It was at the very top of the mountain Polaris and Davy began digging ferociously in the center of the, crater, of the great crater. The more they dug, the softer the dirt became until the ground began to crack and hiss and shake like pudding. Polaris's batteries started to leak. Davy's stomach did a somersault. They dashed for the scooter and just as Davy reached for the handlebars, look what's happening. Oh no.
Water rushed down the canyons, raced through the riverbeds, and flooded the empty oceans. The scooter screamed ahead of the crashing waters. Davy didn't dare look back. He could hear the roar right behind him. Later that day, Davy and Polaris bounded through the door. Well, young man, did you find something to do? His mother asked. Polaris sneezed. Davy smiled. Red mud oozed out of his pants. His mother turned around slowly and peered out the door. Oh, my. Do you see what's out the door? The water. At first, everybody was happy to have water back on Mars, especially because the Martians started bathing again. No one was happier than Davy, who spent much of the time surfing. <laughs> but soon, many more people came. Many, many more people came from Earth, and they came with ships and hotels and sunscreen. Oh dear, Davy's mother sighed one day. I miss our old Mars with so with without so many people around. Maybe we should move to Saturn, Davy's father suggested, and Davy's eyes grew big. Davy knew there was nothing to do on Saturn. The end.